Chapter 8, Mishnah 6, the Torah teaches that a father has the legal right to identify a person as his son. This right, however, applies only to identifying his own child, not to identifying other relatives. The Mishnah discusses laws that are related to this right. If someone says, this person is my son, he is believed, and the person will inherit him when he dies. Also, if the father dies without any other known children, his widow is not subject to Yibum or Chalitza, because he did not die childless. But if he says, this person is my brother, he is not believed, because the Torah gave a person the right to identify only his child. Therefore, unless there are witnesses to prove the claim, the identified person is not assumed to be his brother. And if the identifier dies without children or a father, the alleged brother does not inherit him, nor is his widow required to perform yibum or Halitza with the brother. The Mishnah notes, however, that identifying a person as one's brother does, does have one effect, and the alleged brother takes along with him in his portion of their a father's estate. Since this person identified someone as his brother, he has, in essence, admitted that the person is entitled to share their father's estate as an equal heir. Therefore, should his own father die after the identification, he must give part of his own share in the father's estate to the man he identified as his brother, while any other brothers he has do not have to do so. But if the alleged brother dies after receiving that share of the estate, the properties return to their place with the brother who identified him. Since he was the only one who gave the alleged brother anything from the father's estate, it all returns to him if that alleged brother dies. The Mishnah notes that this is true only of property that the alleged brother received from the father's estate. If property came to the alleged brother from another place, for example, he received a gift or bought property and then he died without children, the identifier's other brothers inherit the alleged brother's property along with him, although they never agreed that the deceased person was their brother. Since according to the identifying brother they were all brothers, he must share the legacy with them. The previous Mishnah discussed deathbed, deathbed instructions of a seriously ill person, which have the power to transfer property even without a Kenyan. This Mishnah teaches that merely writing down such instructions without issuing them has no effect. If someone dies and a diakiti, a deathbed will, sorry, diatiki, a deathbed will, is found strapped to his thigh, this is nothing. Although the will contains the man's instructions regarding the distribution of his estate, it has no legal effect, because he neither gave the instructions nor gave the will to anyone while he was alive. Therefore, he presumably intended his instructions to take effect with the transfer of the document. And once he has died, this cannot happen, because the document cannot serve to make a Kenyan after his death. But if he gave the dia tiki to another person before he died, whether that person is one of the heirs or not one of the heirs, then his words stand. And the instructions in the will are followed, as long as the person gave the will to someone else to acquire while he was alive, it is the same as if he issued the instructions verbally, and the properties are awarded to the recipients listed in the will.